Okay, so first off, the section is called translations, and I'm just going to quickly define what a translation is. A translation is basically sliding something. So it could be a point or a line or a rectangle or a triangle or whatever, any kind of figure if you, so this pen, I can translate this pen. I can move it left and right, I can move it up and down, I can move it on sort of a diagonal to a kind of combination of left, right, up and down, but just sliding it around is a, a translation in essence. Okay, it's a, it's a particular type of transformation. The whole chapter is about different types of translations and it's split up into different sections, so this is our first kind. Okay, um, so before we really get into the translations, I'm going to talk about something called a vector. And it's similar to um, a line segment. It kind of looks like a ray, but it's not the same as a ray. Um, it's, it's a line segment. It's like a line segment, except it describes direction and distance. Okay. So it has a start and a finish. So it's a, a it's very similar to a directed line segment, okay? So this particular vector I have here is going to start at point A and finish at point B, okay? So it, it's tempting to look at this and think, oh, that's a ray, because that's how we do draw rays, but rays go on infinitely, okay? A vector is different because it's actually going to stop here at the end of the arrow. There's another point there, point B, and the reason the arrow is there is just to show you that, hey, this is where it starts, this is where it finishes, okay? And the place where it starts is called the initial point. The place where it finishes is called the terminal point. Okay, and then the way we would name this, we'd call this vector AB. You have to put the, um, the the, the, the initial point first. So ve vector BA would look similar, but it would be pointing in the opposite direction because it would be starting with B and going to A. Okay, So this tells me right here that this starts with A, finishes with B. Um, and then there is a, a, a way that you can, um, a symbol for this, if you don't want to write out the word vector. Um, got a little arrow above the AB, but there's only the top part of the hook. There's no bottom part of the hook. So this means vector AB. Okay. All right. So um, we can write vectors in what's called component form. Okay. So um, let's say that this particular. Um, let's say that we we knew the uh, horizontal and vertical distances between points A and B. So in other words, let's say that um, this is I don't know three units going to the right here. Okay, and then I shouldn't have written terminal point right there, but let's say that's that's two units going up. Okay, so um, component form is going to describe the change from the initial point to the terminal point. Okay, um, I different there. That's annoying me now. All right. Anyways, so um. The um, component form of this um, of this vector that I have drawn here, it's going to look a lot like an ordered pair. Okay, so I'm going to put do the um, the horizontal distance first, com and then a comma followed by the vertical distance. So I'm going three to the right and two up. If this one was an ordered pair, I'd put it in parentheses. But we've got these special angled brackets that are used just for vectors. Okay, so this is. Um, is component form of, of that vector, okay? Because it describes, hey, from the initial point, I went three right, two up, okay? That's component form. All right, so let's take a look at this next example. Name the vector. So some people might call this vector CD, and they'd be wrong because it doesn't start with C, it starts with D. So this would be vector DC, and I'm just going to use the symbolic form here. There's my name. Right? Not the same as vector CD. Okay? And in component form, I'm going from the initial point, so that's starting up here. I'm thinking I do the left and right first, the horizontal, so I'm going to go left three and then down four. Left three, comma, down four, 
and I'm going to use those special angled brackets again, and there is the component form of that particular vector. Okay. All right. So um, we can use vectors to do translations. Okay. So that's what's going to happen here. I've got this triangle already graphed here, and this says graph the image of triangle ABC after a translation. Um, over this vector. So this vector is telling me right here that I'm going to go right 3 and then down 2. Okay, and that means I'm going to take this entire triangle and shift it 3 units to the right and then 2 units down. Okay, easiest way to do that is just to take the corners one by one. So I'm going to take point A, 1, 2, 3, I've got 3 right and then two down, okay, and there's going to be my new point A, okay. Now, I'm, I'm going to put a, a little dash by this, and this is important because this means this is the new point A. So this is actually called A prime, if I say that out loud, okay, but that little dash tells me that this is the new one, right, my initial, my initial point didn't have that um, that little uh, apostrophe by it. Uh, okay, so let's do the same thing with the other point. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3 to the right, 2 down with point B. So this is going to be my new point B. Um, oh, and I accidentally called that A as well. I'll fix that on the, the notes. Let me change that into C. And then C, I'll go 3 right, 1, 2, 3, uh, 2 down. And here is C prime then, okay? And then I just connect the dots. And you know, use a ruler if you want to be neater than me, but there we go. That whole triangle is shifted um, three right and two down. And usually when we're asked to, to graph it, we also want to give the coordinates. It depends on the problem a little bit. Um, I technically just ask you to graph here, but usually I'm going to give the coordinates of the, um, of the final points, but that's easy enough now, right? So this is two to the right, two down here. Um, B is going to be two to the right, one up. And then C is one right, zero up. Those those prime coordinates, I mean. Okay, so I'm not going to recopy those there, but now I have the coordinates of all those points as well. Okay. All right. So um, the initial image, so this first triangle I have um, is called, that's my original, right? This is has a special name. It's called the pre-image. Pre just means it's before the, the uh, translation that's going to happen, okay? Um, and then this is my, um, this is my final image, my, or my new one, and that's called the image itself. So the pre-image comes before the image, right? Um, Okay, then this says write a rule to translate triangle ABC to, to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, so this is this new one, for a translation of 3 over uh, 3, negative 2. Okay, so this is just um, writing a rule just looks like this. You just want to say, what are you going to do to the original XY pairs? Okay, so since we're going right 3 down 2, that means we're going to add 3 to the x values, right? Because if I take this, say if I take negative 1, I'm going to add 3 to that, which would put me at positive 2, okay? So what I'm going to do is put a little arrow. Every x, I'm going to add 3 to it. And then every y, since I'm going down 2, I'm going to subtract 2 from it, okay? And this is a rule. It's basically saying the same thing as this vector. It's just a different way of expressing it. So this is called a rule, where I show actually what I'm adding and subtracting to the to the to the ordered pairs. Okay, and you could try it with any of these, right? If you take negative two, two, add three and subtract two, then it would put you at one zero for that x and y. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next page. Okay, so there's one here that's the same kind of deal. You can try it out. Um, you can pause it if you like. Um, I'm just going to get to it. So graph. Okay, so I know I'm going right one down two. Right one down two. Right one down two. 
Down one, down two. Okay, and when you actually um, graph these, anytime you have a translation, it's just a, a slide. So if your triangle or whatever it is you're, um, you're translating doesn't look like it's the same size and shape after you translate it, probably something went wrong. So just eyeballing this, those two triangles look like they're still the same size and shape. So that's what I want it to happen, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and, and um, get these ordered pairs. So this would be negative 1, 0. And 1, negative 2. And 2, 1. Okay, so far so good. And now we're going to write a rule. So this just says, hey, we're adding 1 to the x's, subtracting 2 from the y's. So if this is my one of my original ordered pairs, make those adjustments. There is my rule. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. And um, now moving on. This says what is the image of the 0.56 using this, this um, translation rule. Okay. So um, all I have to do, if, if I'm looking for the image, so that means that this must be the pre-image. Okay. So this is just a particular point, right? You can translate just a point, like, you know, if you translate a point A in that previous problem, just move down there. So it doesn't have to be a triangle, right? It's just a little bit easier to see with triangles. But, so it's asking for the image. That means this must be the pre-image, okay? So, you know, this is gonna be my pre-image here. Um, that piece, and then this piece is gonna be my image. So it, I've got the, um, I'm going to follow this rule. So instead of x, y, I've got the point five, six, And that means, hey, I'm going to subtract 2 from 5. And I'm going to add 3 to 6. Because I just replaced x and y with 5 and 6 in both of those slots. Okay? And now I'm just going to simplify this. 5 minus 2 is 3. 6 plus 3 is 9. Boom. There it is. Okay? So usually I find in quizzes and tests, problems like that go pretty well, but then a lot of people will miss um, one like part B because it's a little trickier, okay? So this time be careful with these ones. This is saying what is the pre-image, okay? What is the pre-image of this? So that means this is going to be my image this time, okay? So let's map this out. I have this, I'm just going to rewrite that rule up here. Okay. This time I know the image, I don't know the pre-image. So I actually have this piece. What I don't know yet is what the original XY pair is that would lead to that. Okay. So what I like to do with these is think, as, it's kind of go backwards. So instead of subtracting 2 for them in this, because I didn't start with the pre-image, I'm going to go backwards. 2 has already been subtracted. So I want to add two actually to get back to my original one, okay? Or another way you can think about this, you can set x minus two equal to y and then figure out what the x would be, okay? And we can do the same kind of thing over here with the y's. We can set y plus three equal to three, okay? So maybe I'll, I'll set it up like that. So I've got x minus two equals two and I've got y plus three equals three. So let's see be adding 2, which is 4, be subtracting 3, which is 0. Okay, so the pre-image then would be the point 4, 0. 4 for x, 0 for y, there's my pre-image. And you could test it out, right? You could use this rule. Hey, if I subtracted 2 from the x, that gives me that. If I added 3 to the y, it gives me that. Okay, but you got to kind of think backwards. So another way is just to kind of do the, do the uh, arithmetic backwards, okay? Next problem is exact same kind of deal. Why don't you try it out? You can pause the uh, pause the video if you like. I'm just going to get to it. Got the image. That means this is the pre-image. So using that rule, I'm going to add 4 to the x. I'm going to subtract 1 from the y. And I'll simplify that. There we go. Okay. This time, let's see. Just recopying the rule here. Try to make it clear what I'm doing. 
Okay, this time I'm looking for the pre-image. I don't know what this is yet, but I do know what the image is. That would be the 0.45. Okay, and now I can set up two little equations here. X plus four is going to equal four. And y minus one will equal five. And I just solve both of those to so subtract four here. And add one here. And then the point zero, oh, and I'm off screen. Zero six is uh, my solution. Okay, and that's the end of the section. See you next time.